Okay. I am ready to go. You ready to go? Yep. Everyone ready? Yep. I want to intro this one real quick. Okay. Well, first, let me do something. That's what I forgot about. You no, had no, a plan, no. right? Can we? Well, I want to talk about something before we start. That you didn't tell me? Is this a surprise <laughs> for me? No. T why are you so nervous right now? Is this recording? Yeah, Good. It's then recording. people will Fuck. see how nervous you are. That's <laughs> awesome. That's going at the beginning <laughs> of the podcast right there. Because, no, okay, go ahead. Okay, whatever. So, Hi guys. first of all, <laughs> It's not a setup for him. It's just to say, ladies, I heard you. I have the Vegeta one. I know you guys love the bad guy. And then I was literally asked to have a Vegeta one. So, ladies, I heard you. There it is, the Vegeta. Gotcha. I that bought it just for you. Just so you know. That was the opening we had talked Exactly. About. I just forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got all nervous and everything. And, by the way, today I am the man with a plan. He's the man with a plan, and I'm Pickle Rick. There you go. Just here to destroy everything. Um, so this week we wanted to get into, we've gotten a whole bunch of questions regarding mostly, to, mostly the nutrition subjects yes. is what we're going to do today. Yep. Um, so we kind of have a compiled list of things that we've been getting yep. from people. Uh, anything that is going to require like a 30 to 40 minute deep dive will probably just end up happening on its own episode. So yeah, I would agree with that. So well, well, let's talk about the nutrition group because yes. I started, well, let's give the background. Yeah. I started nine, ten months ago now. You would have started uh, before September. It's probably like October. Before September is October. It's like six to, or I'm so, sorry. Do you August. have a son? <laughs> yeah, he's going to school, right? <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm guessing your <laughs> wife is helping him. Um, Cut that out. Guys. Yeah, he has to be. Oh no, it's longer than that. It has to be because look, the the mentoring program has been on it for five, six months now. So they're the one who started. I started in September. it in September when I got here. Yeah. All right. So that yeah. means I've, I did it like three, four months before. So, okay. yeah. oh yeah, so you're at about nine, nine, I'm at about four yeah, or five. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then uh, now we have a autoregulation group yep. that has been on it for about five weeks, six weeks, yep. right? That are people from the outside in the sense that they're not part of the mentoring program. And, and so far, we're, we're going to talk about what we wanted out of the group, but I have to say we have a success rate around 95%, mm -hmm. I think. So that makes me extremely happy. We, we're actually doing better than I hope for, yeah. in a way. So what do we mean by success rate, by the way? So when we started the protocol, we decided three things. We say we were going to improve sleep. That's dramatically uh, happening. We would get rid of cravings, and we would get people mental clarity. What does mental clarity mean? It's the stuff people get on fasting, mm -hmm. right? That no fog, just sharp mind that allows you to go yeah. do stuff. And you'd still be able to train. Yeah, and so that was, so I established the first two, which is sleep and cravings for the first four weeks, and mental clarity as an added bonus. And that we had 95% success rate. What do we mean by that? We measured the sleep, and then we, you know, asking people mm -hmm. from a one to 10, uh, shit like that still counts as measuring, by the way, even though some people just love the HRV monitors and shit like that. Yeah. You can also ask human beings how they feel. And one of the questions for sleep was, do you wake up rested in the morning? It surprised me how many of them said no, mm -hmm. that they feel more tired when they wake up in the morning than they did going to sleep, or at least not feeling rested when they wake up. And now, basically, we had success on that. We have the numbers on HRV and, you know, my aura ring to back it up on mm -hmm. me and other people as well. Cravings is basically gone and mental clarity is up. So that to me is a tremendous success. And then we have the other stuff where training got better because they can boost mm -hmm. the sympathetic side of things. And we've done, before we get into the questions too, the one thing I noticed, like you said, we spent that four to five weeks laying just a foundation. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. We weren't including a lot of the other, maybe the subtleties. Yeah. Uh, and not or, the, or a lot of the individualized. Exactly. Yeah. Indigi that's yeah. why we suppress, I think, at yeah. first is individualizing yeah. because well, we talked about that last night, where you were saying the problem also is the 80-20. Yes. I, I've noticed this, too. Like, if, if you're going to do this kind of, this nutrition thing, um, I'm totally okay with 80-20 being your percentage of everything. Because I, my, of every nutritional plan or approach mm -hmm. that people have, I, I always like to start with, uh, what they say, just, just don't be fucking weird. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, like if you're if you're out having yeah, dinner, don't ruin your life. If you're out yeah, having yeah, yeah, dinner, you're yeah. at a birthday party, and, and someone's got cake. Yeah. You like don't. I swear to God, don't ever be the person that says I can't have cake. I'm on a diet. I'm a vegan. That's fucking weird. Yeah. You know. So just if people are eating cake, just eat some fucking cake, but don't get weird about it. No, don't just be do bell peace. Yeah, or, or go, go for play a with walk. the kids. Go so, play with. The, how about that? You're yeah. the birthday party. Have the cake. Go play with the kids yeah. for two hours. Just do something. But but what I'm noticing is is I'm seeing. Like the 80-20, you can't 80-20 every day. 
Yeah. Because you're not spending enough time. That's not what 80 20 means. Enough time yeah. in, what's the word I'm looking for? In balance. Like you're not yeah. spending enough time aligned. No, because they are principles to follow, right? If yeah. you have rice for lunch and don't do anything after, you're not doing the protocol. Yeah. And exactly. Even no, but it was, that's it was just only, one thing. Exactly. Yeah. But it was only 100 grams of carbs. Yeah. Therefore, I'm within 20%. No, you're bullshitting yourself and me, but more importantly, yourself. Yeah. That's really what you're doing is you're bullshitting yourself because you wanted rice. You went for it, and now you're justifying not following the protocol. Yeah. So that's not what 80-20 means. Yeah. And I think that's very important. And I don't there. want. And I don't want to get it. And the main thing we want with this type of nutrition, anyways, is I don't want it to turn into a thing where it's not working. We say, well, yeah, it's because you're fucking it up. The whole point of this is for you to get truly a good sense for how you feel in your state, but and you're not going to get that. The five percent that did not work, though. Yeah. Every single time I talked to them, because I talked to them personally, and every single time he was like. Yeah, I was having protein for um, uh, rice for lunch because I wanted to increase my mental focus. Yeah. I was like, that goes against everything I said. Yeah. It was supposed to be fat for mental. Yeah. So, and then after that, he was like, yeah, I have my eggs in the morning. But like, yeah, but then you go into stressful situations. So the 5% where it didn't work was because they did not understand that it's not chemistry based, but it's neurological based. It's yeah. like you're supposed to be either in parasympathetic or sympathetic and play one versus the other. That's yeah. the point of the protocol, right? If you go the 80 20 and fuck that up, then you won't get the results. Yeah. And so for the same reason, I think that we, we, we kept a lot of the individualized, the specifics off of it in the beginning is exactly why I think you need to stay very strict for weeks for most of the t like almost all of the time not just the food that you eat, but yes, the time the time and that's why we said four weeks by the yeah. way we we knew what we were asking for four weeks that means like after a while you're gonna have to individualize the plan obviously but yeah. you need to know what a state is what's parasympathetic what's sympathetic what's fight versus flight that takes time with a consistent principles being applied yeah. so if you start to have dessert after lunch you're not doing it anymore, especially in the first four weeks. You're three months in, it won't make a difference. Yeah. Because you'll feel like shit and go like, yeah, okay, but it won't, whatever. But at first, you, oh, wh what happened? I don't feel good anymore. And it's because your nervous system yeah. is still adapting to something that is very different. Well, not only that adaptation, that ad adaptation, but you also have to become aware of it. And that's going to yeah. take time that's spent that's, that's the talk about Andy, right? Is knowing what mm -hmm. intensity is on paper is one thing. Experiencing it is a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Yeah, it's a totally different animal. Yep. So we've got a pile of questions. For yeah, we did. Yeah. So let's um, go at that because people, okay. So by the way, we have the 100 people mentoring program and auto-regulation group, which is great. But we also have a lot of people have done it based on the podcast that we did. And I'm not even counting those in the results, but we've seen it even on people that just out of the podcast are doing the protocol. We had awesome results as well, especially on sleep cravings yeah. and so that. I, I like this. So. I don't want to do this in order. Oh, yeah, and I, I, yeah. I also accidentally just gave that message a thumbs down you sent me, so I hope you don't hurt your it's feelings. It's okay. It's not, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> just bla bl uh, blast Kyla's work. It's okay. It's all cool. Uh, I'll so, sure tell her. so let's go with, uh, a lot of these are very, very specific, but I want to start with the mm -hmm. basic one. Mm -hmm. um, would you keep more complex carbohydrates further away from training and have more simple carbs right before or during training? So complex, meaning like pasta, potatoes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, that brings a, that's not basically something I necessarily talk about in the first four weeks because I don't want to introduce too many complications either. But there is a difference between starch and sugar, and the difference is going to be the kind of training you're going to have. The harder you push in training, especially toward heavyweights or whatever, the more we're going to need toward higher glycemic mm -hmm. sugars. So that means carbs, that means sugar, right? Yeah. Honey, all the shit that basically you're going to use as a reward system for yourself because if you're going to start pounding Nutella it's not about the carb intake you're just rewarding yourself which is fine as well by the way there's a way to do this yeah that we that we cover in the next four to eight weeks on the second part of nutrition is a reward system so I don't have a problem with people getting Nutella but if you're doing 45 minutes active recovery on a bicycle at the gym no Nutella to Might feel, feel that, too aggressive. Yeah, yeah. that first of all if you have it before you'll crash yeah. Because that is not a proper fuel, right? And if you have it after as a reward, you're fucking up too. Like something very high glycemic. I actually don't want people to use it uh, too much before because even though at first I say go ahead, I have carbs before because it's going to allow you to go into sympathetic that you're going to use in training. After a while, 
let's say six weeks, eight weeks or whatever, I much rather you get to the sympathetic state yourself, mentally, mm -hmm. putting yourself in a proper state, and then you start to feed the state with carbs as you train. And so the type of training that you do will define the type of carbs that you will ingest, right? If I'm doing, let's say, a two hour bike ride to Amsterdam, I'll eat uh, rice or stuff like that. Why? Because it's going to allow me to last longer. I've tried to do it with uh, even my carbolin drink. Mm -hmm. It was a massive failure. 10, 15 minutes after that crash. I tried to do um, with just uh, chocolate. Didn't work as well. Like it wasn't a sprint. So I found different stuff that worked really well. The best one, weirdly, actually for me, was I had a crepe with Nutella and a cider. The cider and the sugar allowed me to to go 20 minutes yeah. and the crepe lasted me an hour and uh, the, rest the rest. So for an hour and a half, I just blasted my way back. That was awesome actually. And that was when you biked all the way to Amsterdam from here? So I biked all the way to Amsterdam on carboline and stuff. <coughs> I didn't like it. But I came, <coughs> I, so that's about two hours. And I came back on crepe and cider. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I was like, I need to do this more often. But I don't know if I'm talking about the crepe with Nutella or the cider or the ride back. <coughs> but the two together <laughs> doesn't matter. It, it worked perfect. really well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so to go back, sorry, yeah. to go back, if you're doing a lesser workout toward intensity, you're going to go toward the starches. If you're doing higher in intensity, especially in weight, you're going to go toward higher glycemic. Mm -hmm. to answer the when question. we talk intensity, are you meaning, like, let's say a workout where, say the weight load's not crazy intense, but it's short, something like Fran. You want yeah. high glycemic still for that, just like you would if you were going to do a three rep max. So back I'll squat. have it, I'll have it, let's say, well, I mean, uh, let's say I have a Metcon that is 10 minutes long. Okay. Right? I go at five minutes and I'm starting mentally to start to go away. I'm bonking. I might sip on honey. Okay. The point on that is not the sugar of the honey. It's the sweet taste of it. Right? So I'll plaster honey all over my mouth because that sweet taste will allow me to trigger a fight response, which will al allow me to increase performance. So I'm not doing the sugar because of the high glycemic stuff. I'm doing the sugar because it's so sweet. Okay. The honey in that case, because it's yeah. so sweet, that will drive me toward the sympathetic response. That's actually what I use the honey for. Okay. Is the sweetness of it has been tested, where they were showing that they were getting people uh, sugar water, super sweet. People were spit it out, so never got the sugar in, and their performance went up by 6%. That was on a bicycle too. Mm -hmm. So imagine for weight. You can yeah. actually get a super strong response out of the sweet taste of anything. I have been, just anecdotally, I mm -hmm. have been doing about for the last two weeks now, um, as I'm kind of increasing my training to things mm -hmm. that are a little bit heavier now, and with some overall intensity for conditioning, which I fucking hate. So it's like a thing where it's I almost have to like just shove myself into that situation. I agree. And just, you know, fight my way out. But I've been going in almost almost fasted, fasted for a guy my size basically. Like yeah. like, like you one have a coffee of cream. Yeah. like one coffee and cream in the morning and then I'll train at like two PM That's with fasted. nothing but honey. Yeah. And and it is now like as for the, anyone that's done strong man or powerlifting, that honey at the, when you're fasted is almost as effective. If you swish around your mouth, is almost as effective as cracking open ammonia capsules and hitting and that nose like, like except you last know. longer. Yeah, and like so, so now it's longer. become like a part of like if there's a, a heavy lift or something that's a yeah. little bit even longer than like mm -hmm. a, a single rep because yeah. I don't want to do a set of five heavy squats with nose torque yeah. because I can't breathe and I want. But if I'll do one rep, I will do that for sure. It's I love that not shit. Good for you, but that's Probably another problem. Yeah. But I love that yeah. shit. Um, <laughs> no one loves that shit. I do. Oh, oh man, I think it's so great. Weird. I think it's great. Oh, you're <laughs> it's so an acquired weird. taste. Obviously. But but now that's like the the honey is almost as as effective to me. So if I'm doing anything other than just top end strength, I'll go back. It's just part of my routine. Just a little bit of honey, keep it in my mouth until I'm ready yeah. to lift. And you, I get fucking keyed in like like yeah. I haven't been in six months. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's extremely effective. But like for example, when I do uh, conditioning, like uh, I have that workout that I do, which is 400 meter run on my true form. 20 GSG sit-ups, a minute on the airdyne and some front squat with a sandbag. So three rounds is horrible. Usually yeah. I make it two rounds, let's be yeah. honest. But I go like, you know, like top speed on everything. So it's a fucking sprint all over. After the workout, I don't want Nutella. I don't want any of that. I'll, I'll have my Carbolin, which is a complex carbohydrate drink, but mm -hmm. it's mostly sweet potatoes and rice. So it's actually far, Bit far less glycemic. Carb, yeah. yeah, but then I get 60, 70 grams. Okay. And then that takes me out of the cortisol Mm -hmm. mode toward more like the fight mode so okay that's that, that's by the we'll I think that's a podcast that one, yeah. but that's a podcast in itself where 
cortisol is in flight, not in fight. The problem is they say cortisol is a sympathetic hormone. That's not true. It's, enfin, it is true in the sense of it's a sympathetic, but which part? Yeah. It's, a it's a flight mode. Yeah. Anyway, and so to get out of that, I take myself back into fight with the carbs. Tastes great. So it's, it's still sweet. So I get that, but it's lower glycemic, 70 of them. I feel awesome. That allows me to take myself back in fight. And once I feel awesome, it takes me back to uh, flow, which is where oxytocin or that stuff is. So basically what it's doing is I'm getting the carbs, not so much for the lesson that the workout that I just did. I'm doing it for the next one as well. So I have the, um, the oxytocin to bound me to the workout saying, see, it was good for you. How mm -hmm. do I go there? Cortisol plus carbs puts me back into fight. That's the serotonin fighting yeah. the cortisol. There I'm like, that actually I feel better than I thought. That's the freestone model, it puts me into flow. Flow is where oxytocin will be there to bound the prediction that this is good for me. And so by having that reward system, at the correct reward system, yeah. that's very important. The correct reward system, I'm, I'm basically making sure I can do the next session. Gotcha. And that's where it's so important to create the right reward after you train because by doing that, you go from flight to fight to flow and you make sure the next session is better. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, next session is worse because you finish in flight, which is cortisol, which is extremely damaging for you. And, and you're making sure your body doesn't want to do and it. And then yep. the next time you try to go to that place, your you? body's going to go, listen, dude, what the fuck? You know what this like, was like last time. This is, right? No, but plus this is evolution telling you not to go there. Yeah. Why would you go chase the bear that can kill you? Like there's everything in your body telling you, well, no, yeah. it was bad last time. We finished in flight for a reason. Yeah. Why would you go poke the bear again, yeah. dummy? Yeah. And so he'll do everything he can to avoid that. So if you create a reward system that is correct, you're saying we can win. Mm -hmm. We can beat the bear. And then you start. With the correct reward system, you thought you beat the bear. Yeah. There or, you go. Well, Famous last words. Um, or at the very least, you get that and so something goes, that was kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I did good. I'm, I didn't die. Uh, well, that's actually how it feels when I do cardio. It's yeah. like, I didn't die. Yeah. I guess it was good. Um, so I didn't die. Um, and so by doing that, you make sure you can do the next session. So now I'm actually having probably two sessions a week of pure cardio because on some days, I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm at a stage in nutrition where, based on the reward that I'm looking for, it will change my training. So that's an auto-regulation training. Like, I'm not kidding. So for example, when I lift super heavy, I'm on Nutella. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm almost in a panic mode or stuff like that. Like, I and I also think it's important to back up is that when you're going to do heavy training, you want Nutella. But also, when you're craving Nutella, you know that like maybe you should be doing some heavy training today. That, that, like, like that's, that's exactly that. It's that's not, how it's I look not just, yeah. I'm going to go do some heavy lifting. Therefore, I'm going to make sure I get some Nutella. It's actually the other way. I want Nutella, therefore I should do heavy yeah. training. That's literally what I see my body's responding to now is some days I know I want to train. Yeah. You know, some days, no. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'll do some active recovery. But some days I'm like, I'm going to kill something. Yeah. So now the question is, what is it I'm killing? And then I know if I want, car sometimes I crave the carbolin. And mm -hmm. I know that's because I want conditioning. Yeah. Why? Because it's going to take me in flight. And some days I enjoy that fight to go from flight to fight. And it's important to also to say that it's not because carboline is delicious. No. It's not like, you no. know what I mean? No, no, it's, no, it's because good. it's how good it feels yeah. once I have it. Yeah. But that's the thing is if I have carboline after training heavy, I've done it, I don't feel shit. Yeah. It's not a good reward. So I have it and I'm like, yeah, whatever. That does not make me want to do the next one. So now it's basically an entire training based on autoregulation, based on the reward system. So I know if I'm craving Nutella, that means I have to go lift some heavy shit. It doesn't mm -hmm. stress me out, but I'm like, I'm going to fucking go heavy. If I want Carboline, it's one of those days where I have to hover between fight and flight yeah. and just murder myself that way. And so I have different rewards for different training. And the reward tells me what I should do because that's, I think, the, so we, you know, with nutrition, we have, you have macros. Mm -hmm. With training, you have program. Your, you have program. Yeah. And whether that day or not you should do heavy, it's like doesn't matter. I'm going to lift heavy. That is, it's the same thing as having carbs when you should have protein. Some days, it's what are you going to kill today? That's what literally you should think about, and that's what the reward system is giving me. Is what do I kill today? Do I want to kill my flight fight? Do I want to lift heavy? Do I want to do strongman? And based on the reward, I know exactly what I should do. So it's, that's a group actually we're going to start. It's the auto-regulation training based on how we should be for the day. You're not going to, you're going to eat based on what happens. Yeah. You should train exactly like that. Like today is one of those days. All right, that's my training. So you should have three training. You should have training based on a week or two week period. Yeah. I mean, not 
daily stuff. Just like your nutrition should be about the next two hours, mm -hmm. your training should be for the week coming. Out of that week, I want two conditioning sessions, two strength sessions, two yeah. strongman sessions. And it's whenever whatever. those days come, let That's it be. It. And so yeah. two days in a row of conditioning, fuck it, yeah. Three days, all right. But guess what? Next week's probably going to be three heavy days. And then, so if I look in a week, two weeks, months period, I've done all the stuff I was supposed to do. But on that you day- You were fighting yourself the whole time. Right? On the contrary. Yeah. I was going with what my body needed, which is auto-regulation, right? Yeah. That's the point. And that's why we're going to start a group, the auto-regulation training, right? That applies the same ideas of the nutrition to training. And for me, has work so much better. I'm, I'm the leanest I've ever been by far at 220. And What's up, Richard? Why, Richard? Richard is. Why, why are you announce? Why why are you announcing the auto regulation training already? I, I barely did. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I barely don't, did. Don't you dare say email data for information because then she will literally kill me. She doesn't know yet. No, she she's just like just don't have them email me. Do like, not email day at strongfit.com about it. Email info at strongfit.com yeah. yeah. <laughs> about it. Thank not you. John. Day at, at strongfit.com. D e y a. No, <laughs> Who knows, with the delay, well, no, we're, we're running out of episodes. This will be out in like two weeks, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. we'll launch it by then. What, what did we say we're launching anyway? In March. Be yeah, All right, we'll so I'm not that far off. Yeah, we'll there you go. Close. <laughs> well, we're cutting it a little bit close anyway. <laughs> no, but no one will listen to that part, don't worry. <laughs> so, <laughs> no problem. Let me jump into here. Where was I? Right, auto-regulation, that's the point. Yes, yeah, yeah. so. Um, what about there's, the first four weeks. <laughs> there's some specifics here yep. um, that I think we can at least touch on. These won't take too long. The um, how about do you want to make a distinction between omega three and omega six fatty acids? There are differences. Um, a lot of the by the way, wait, wait, wait. Let me backtrack something. On the podcast, we didn't talk about the gut flora. No. Which. We we can, oh, there's no okay, way we, we can get into that now. Okay, can we go in a little bit? A little bit. Okay, a little bit. Just a little bit. Because I think that might be, if not the entire next episode. Yes, it is. Or the it might, it might be the entire two after that. Yes, most. Okay, yeah, that's very true, actually. Let me go real quick into it. Kay. We have the, the nervous system, right? Has a number of things in it. You have the central nervous system, which is basically the spine and the, um, and the brain, right? And then you have, on the other side, you have the aut autonomous and... Um, and okay. somatic nervous system, which is basically stuff that happens by the, like digestion without control, and then somatic mm -hmm. is what you can actually control. And then there's something called the enteric nervous system, which is basically the gut from intestine all the way to the anus. It's actually controlled by its own nervous system. And that's extremely important. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go into details, but also in the stomach, there is the gut flora. And we started studying it only 20 years ago because the bacteria that are in it cannot survive in a petri dish. So we didn't know anything about it, and we knew there was bacteria, but we didn't know anything about them because we couldn't study them up until 20 years ago, where they start to do like DNA sequencing of stool and stuff like that. And we started to see amazing stuff where the gut flora actually changes behavior. It causes basically, we know, for example, depressed people have a different gut flora. That non-depressed people, we did uh, what is called fecal trans, uh, transplant, not shit, just the bacteria for depressed people into mice and we saw behavior modification where mice that were fighting don't fight anymore. There's a number of things like that. And those bacteria are also involved in digestion of the food. So protein saturated fats and BCAAs are controlled by something named the bacteroids. And then you got Prevotella that does the starch and the, uh, the sugars. And so, and then you have Ruminococcus. It seems like we have basically three enterotypes even for people, they, they favor one, right? And so each is responsible for digestion of a certain group. That means that your body, naturally, is going to be better at digesting certain food than others. And that's going to have a greater impact on your nervous system. That that voice inside your stomach, and I'm not kidding, basically will be louder or more effective depending on your own composition mm -hmm. versus certain food. That's why certain food will affect people a certain way, and, but not others. Because it's an entire thing within the nervous system and the gut flora that is extremely powerful. So omega-3, omega-6, all saturated versus unsaturated fats, for example, do not seem to obey the same uh, enterotype of bacteria. Like saturated fats is bacteroid, so it's parasympathetic. Unsaturated fats, I can't tell you exactly which bacteria does it because I can't find it. Educated guess is it's toward the prevotella or at least the sympathetic. It seems like unsaturated fats give you more energy, like 
almost a sympathetic energy, whereas saturated fats is more toward the parasympathetic side of things. So omega-3, omega-6, there, there are going to be some differences, but all that is so much more complex than we thought. That's the problem is looking at food uh, on its own. as chemistry. Yeah. Is, it's not that. It, yeah. it has an impact on the nervous system because of the gut flora. It seems like food is a language yeah. between the brain and the enteric nervous system. So between the monkey and the bacteria, there's an entire conversation that happens all the time. And a huge part of that conversation is the food. So food is not just, I get protein, this happens. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a language. And, it's, and the language depends on who you are, your environment, genetic factors, kids, what you ate as a kid. Oh, there's so much into this. It's, yeah. We'll do podcasts about this, yeah. but it's the most fascinating thing ever. So, yes, there is a difference between omega-3 and omega-6, depending on people as well. For now, I don't want people to stress about it. Give me four weeks where you do the principle in a strict way, and then we can start playing. Yeah. And then I'll give you the guidelines as to more or less how this works, and then you'll experiment. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about that for a second. At the end, it comes down to your own mastery of the principles. You have to understand this. Yeah. Stop asking me for recipes. Yeah. Right. I am not going to tell you what to do because how could I? Do you want the, me to tell you what works for me? And I don't think I don't think we have this on here, but it it is a very uh, a very common question. Is these things that come up? It's like, uh, well, what do, what am I supposed to eat for breakfast? What am I supposed to? Eat? It's like, all right, well, that's the wrong question. Yes. You know, it's like first off, do you have to eat breakfast? Uh, can you just eat something? Like, you, th does okay, breakfast have to, have to be what it's been? You for have you to always? eat breakfast. How about you go fasted? Yeah. How about some days you go fasted, some days you don't? Yeah. How would you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the thing. So, so but, but it's your own fucking system. Yeah. Why are you asking me to tell <laughs> you if you should fast in the morning or not? This is where people piss me off. I'm like, why would you ask me? I don't know you. I'm not you. We do not have the same composition all the way to get through. What you're asking me to do is change your behavior. So that we is could, insane. We could actually rename that program. We could have a separate program. Instead of auto-regulation nutrition, it'll just be Julian regulation Regulation. Nutrition. <laughs> exactly. And Julian's just going to tell you what to eat. And what I do. And no, I'm just going to tell you what I do. Oh, yeah, just what you do. Yeah, yeah it won't even so be So every time you. you ask me a question, I'll say, I'm going to tell you, uh, so uh, should you fast? I fast. <laughs> should I have carbs? I have carbs. Yeah. Should I have Nutella? I have Nutella. Start shaving your head. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Not if you're a woman. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, what, you're asking me to change your behavior. Yeah. And by the way, this is not how you learn. Like, uh, I talked about the Ramen, uh, you know, Ramen Heads podcast. Mm -hmm. And why do I talk about that podcast all the time? Because I want people to understand what it takes to be good at something. It takes you taking one thing and being fucking amazing at it. But understand that it's not about the ramen noodles, right? It's about the mastery of one thing will force you to learn, to learn, to learn. and will force you to learn about yourself so much that it will apply to everything in your life. That dude now can learn anything because he knows how to do it. Yeah. You need to learn to learn. And to do that, you have to fucking experiment. Like uh, early on the podcast, oh, no, 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 I think I said that on Melanie's, uh, you know, Humans of Strong mm -hmm. Fit. I was like, you don't want to know what I know. There are truths I would not wish on my worst enemy. Yeah. That's from Nietzsche, by the way. Um, you don't want to know what I know. What you want to do is to apply yourself to knowledge the way I did so that you can learn for yourself how to move forward. So take the lessons, but forget the experience, right? Yeah. Don't have my life experiences that I would seriously suggest you don't. <laughs> um, you don't want to know what I know. But what you want is you want to get the lessons that I got out of it. Those lessons will mean that you have to go through the experience, your own experience, Forget that and get the lesson at each point so you can build the principles. That is basically learning to learn. And this is what most people need to do. So I'm annoyed at people that are too fucking lazy to learn. Yeah. Right? There are two kinds of people in this world. The people I want to believe or the people I want to learn. Which one are you? Mm -hmm. And we talked about it in the Test Negative Test Positive. Like, you learn to believe first and understand. That's what kids do at first. You, learn, you need to learn to believe first and build from there to learn. All right. Most people have learned to believe already. I think that's pretty much established, right? You need to step to adulthood, which is now you need to learn. Mm -hmm. And that means you need to go out there, experiment, fuck yourself up, win, lose. At least have the time, it's not 80%. Yeah. So that there's no other ways to learn, but to lose some of them. Like they go into the plane thinking, I want to win the whole thing. 
Yeah, well, guess what? There's no Santa Claus either. Yeah. And by the way, if you did, you wouldn't learn shit. Mm -hmm. If you were on 100% success rate, you would not learn anything. Right? Sure. You need failures. That's why I tell people when they, when they fail, I'm like, please send it to me. I need to know where I'm wrong in the protocol. And that 5% that fell, it showed me the human side where they were doing whatever they wanted. But they also showed me us because they had carbs then. And, and then that, and plus, that and was a learning process. Plus for us, it exposes a communication gap too. Exactly. Where it's like we can totally. learn where we think So much. That. I've so. learned so much as to... And I'm still learning, by the way, and even through the podcast, as to explain to people how to talk to people and explain them yeah. what they need to do. But the biggest thing that I saw was that. There was a... Stop asking me. You do it. I don't remember if it was a... This is the problem with podcasts and all the talking we yeah. do. I have no Because I don't remember if this was who I was talking to, if I listened to this conversation. We need an intern to just follow us around, tell <laughs> I know, us. Just yeah. take notes. I have a... Uh, don't email Dayat Rompe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First note, do not email Dayat Rompe. Um, the... Uh, but this was a person who I think had started out as a, as a like PT, as a physio. And it basically kind of as they kind of became more and more disgruntled by the work, just the, the nature of the work. Yeah. And it was because people would come in deconditioned in pain or in pain because they're deconditioned. But what would happen is they would come in and just passively mm -hmm. expect the physio to just Imparts, impart some wellness onto their bodies yeah. and then they would march out and that that was the nature of it and that's not a problem with the industry of, of physios <laughs> they have no issue that is, doing that, that is yeah. the, that is but that, that that's butter. a problem about the people yeah and that has nothing to do with a doctor or anything like that that's like that's the people walking in under the assumption that that's how health or medicine works yep. where you come in and they give you a thing and now you are different and it's not the way it's just not the case it's not the way learning works you have to become the type of person or the person who has had that experience now. And the only way you can do that is to get out to, there and have And you can be that. Yeah. By the way, like the whole like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, bullshit. You're just being conditioned incorrectly. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing what we see is macros. For sure. Well, you have someone telling you when you're hungry. That's insane to me. Like I had a guy, of course, from France, sending me a message saying he's supposed to get 450 grams of carbs a day. And he weighs like 80 kilos. I'm not even like 76 kilos, like all those skinny fuckers. Uh, and he's like, I can't gain weight. I'm like, then dude, you're fucking up somewhere. Well, what are we tension? I'm like, no shit. But 400, I don't, I, I'm at under 100 grams of carbs a day right now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I train a lot harder than he does. Yeah. Uh, it's insane, right? The whole, but they did it on a DNA testing. The DNA testing tol told him, so let's talk about that for a second. He does a DNA testing that tells him, like that precise, 53% of his calories should be carbs. Out of a DNA testing, okay, am I, am I the only one who sees bullshit? Yeah. Coming, Richard, don't you want to do the strong fit peer review? Yes. Okay, come yeah. explain what it is real quick. Because that, that's <laughs> going to be epic. Let me, let me, <laughs> let, okay. so you can email. Side, note, side rats. Yeah, yeah, so go ahead, yeah. So we get to spend a whole lot of time. I mean, now he's with someone. I have my wife. But in I'm reality, a fiance now, so there you go. So, spend, I, so we, we spend I won't, be the, I won't be the third wheel anymore at their yeah. fucking dates. So but, that's great. The best part is that I can see where this like tingle of eye. If you've ever seen the show Vikings, this is Ragnar Lothbrok when he's up on the mountain looking at how he's going to conquer Paris. Yeah. And he starts reading these these uh, these studies coming out, and he starts see he starts to yeah. lose his mind a little bit, and he starts to go all infuriated, and he points at the gaps and everything. So I figured. Coach, why don't we have a YouTube channel called Peer Review by Julian? So basically, we're going to take case studies and all these studies that he's reading, and he's going to mark them up in red. We're going to print them out, and he's going to start to go off on YouTube channels. Well, I see there are issues. Going through. Yeah. I think, it, I think it's be, it'd be a fun way to kind of get some steam out. Oh, it's going to be so fun. <laughs> hey, I can't wait for that one. That's there you go. That's yeah, there you that go. popped in my head as I saw yeah. him going crazy, losing it on one of the studies. It's going to be so good. Hashtag uh, strong feed review. Yeah. Peer, review. peer review. So it's a strong feed peer review. <laughs> All right, so let's do a strong fit peer review right now. He gets a DNA test that tells him 53% carbs for his stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. first of all, how the fuck does that work? <coughs> now, <coughs> you have a better understanding of what all they tested for, but my, my understanding uh, is... No is fucking <coughs> oh, don't you? Uh, my, my, my understanding is that basically there was some, like, inflammation responses to certain foods, and that was how they came up with that? No. Is that correct? No, no, it wasn't. No, okay. It wasn't that. Okay. No, no, but for... Okay, so 53%... Carbohydrates. Does that mean Nutella? Could mean anything. How the Those fuck carbs. does that work? Yeah, yeah. So now we're going back to a calorie is a calorie. Yeah. So 1,500 grams of Nutella is something as 1,500 grams of chicken. Did you explain what a calorie was? All right. By the way, let's go there. Let's do it. What is a calorie? Does anybody know out there what a calorie is? 
a calorie is an energy of heat, is a unit of heat energy. Exactly. It. It's the energy required to heat one liter of water by one degree Celsius. How the fuck does that work with the human body? Yeah. We still don't know, right? Yeah. So it's that almost a random thing, basically, that we have assigned to food to help people understand. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's very condescending to think that people cannot understand anything past a calorie and everything. That's another thing that influences me in the fitness industry is training everybody like morons. Yeah. They wouldn't be morons if we actually educated them about the stuff. So instead of using calories, can we please use something else that is far more important? For example, the capacity of the body to digest food. Mm -hmm. If you have honey, it's dissolved in the mouth through enzymes. You don't need to digest it. It already goes right through, right? Bloodstream and all that stuff. If you have red meat, it's hit in the stomach for a longer time because it's very hard to digest. That's how we should base thing. We should have a, whatever name we want to call, digestibility chart, yeah, chart or whatever, yeah. um, based on digestion and not basically calories because that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so glucid, first of all, 53%. We don't know what kind of glucids. I'm like, all right, what if, does that count if you have a training day or not? Most programmers there say training day, you do this. When you don't train, you do that. But okay, but you're still going to get carbs. Carbs for what? To sustain muscle, but muscle are not working. You're on the couch. Do you really think the body needs carb continuously in order to preserve muscle. Carbs are, again, a very seasonal stuff. If you go even starches, basically, we're only parts of the year, but honey is summer, so are fruits. There's actually very little time in the winter where you can have, you can store some of the starches, but you can't store fruits. Mm -hmm. You can't store honey. You can't store any of that stuff. If you look, the higher glycemic, the less you're going to store it. So you can maybe store potatoes and have them, but there's a seasonal aspect to carbs. Carbs are an extreme. You have to understand. And this is not something some cultures like Japan had humongous amount of rice all year long, but they had no sugar. Well, and they the didn't have protein Here's as the much. other thing is they also have had thousands and thousands and thousands of years and generations to one food to build that one food. sort of adaptation. Not potatoes. Yeah. Right. Rice. Everything based, rice based, no. rice based. Very little protein. So yeah. we have to look a little bit at how the human body was conceived through evolution when we look at stuff like that. So just saying 53% of glucid is ridiculous. And again, I was like, all right, so what if you have a stressful day? What does that mean? What if you have the flu? What if none of that is in the DNA testing. And I'm like, okay, does that 50? So you have to have 430 grams of carbs. How's your training going? Mm -hmm. are, you tra are you going conditioning or are you going heavy? Do you think it matters? So. Like you paid for a test, I understand that we provide a lot of information, but I'm like, that, that makes absolutely no sense. And by the way, none of that testing was based on the gut flora. So that means that you can get 400 grams of uh, carbs, have very low prevotella for whatever reason, and not being able to process it anyway. Yeah. So if we're going to go in testing, we need a shitload more testing that is not available to us because we still don't understand all the stuff with the gut flora. Yeah. So that whole 53% is complete bullshit. Yeah. Well, Sorry, it's not, it's, it's absurd. And again, it's based on 430 grams. But if it's honey, it's going to be absorbed a certain way. If it's rice, it's going to be absorbed differently. Is it, where is the quality of the food? What if it's rice coming from, remember that you said turkey in China with this plastic in it? L I'm, I'm making a joke, but it's like meat. Like sometimes the cow is sick. It will, yeah. it will affect your response to the meat. Mm -hmm. So quality of food is there. Uh, if it's high glycemic or low glycemic or stuff like that, they're going to say, oh, obviously it's low glycemic. I don't know, it's at 50%, 53% glucids. It's, that, that's what drives me crazy in all this. And, and so, because I never know where those numbers come from. They go, they have one test or one study. I'm like, by the way, if you have one study, it's called confirmation bias. Yeah. That's what people say. Do you have studies to back that out? Do you want the thousand studies that I read to back out, to, you know, to back up what I said? Okay, but let's or do you want, Or do you want one of the two that are on the other side? Exactly. Because that's the problem with this too. Is, exactly. Is that, is that anything, like there is literally everything on every side of almost every issue. I'll come to the internet. And, right? so, and so the problem is somebody can copy and paste. So if you it's like, like me. See, you're wrong. It's if like, you, well, but there's a thousand the If same you way. like me, you want the two that prove me right. If you mm -hmm. don't like me, you want the two that prove me wrong. Yeah. It's confirmation bias in both cases. So I'll make a deal with everybody where I will post the hundred studies that I read on the subject or stuff like that, but then you're going to spend the time reading them as well and mm -hmm. we'll have a conversation about it. What you cannot do is just go on the internet and say, hey, do you have studies? And you expect me to post two. That's yeah. confirmation bias. 
And if you don't like what I say, you look at those two things that doesn't mean anything. So now I'm spending my time, I'm wasting my time, which annoys me the most, an hour of my time putting all the studies mm -hmm. for you not to read them or discard them because you ask me for a study not to read them and learn, but because what I say challenge your belief system. Mm -hmm. And now you want to hang on to it. And instead of wanting to have a conversation with me, you're just trying to dismiss me. Well, it's just too easy. Yeah. It is the science equivalent of what happens when my wife wants to w start a new show on Netflix and I don't want to watch it. What I do is like, well, let me check some reviews. And I go and I pull up reviews, exactly. except I will only look at one star reviews. Yeah. And I'm like, babe, this show's shit. This yeah. person hated it. Exactly. See, this person hated it. Look at all the reasons we have not to like it. Yeah. Move on. And then we watch what I want to watch. Exactly. You should not say that on a podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> now she'll know. <laughs> so, but a lot of time when I get the, can you give me the studies? That's what this is. It's yeah. their belief system got challenged. Like, I don't mind talking about anything. All I ask is that if you're going to ask me that question, that means you're actually going to read the 10, 20 stuff. And then you're going to look at the, at the points they're making, the principles behind it, trying to link them together and have a rational conversation about the whole stuff. Then I'm willing to talk to you. But if it's just to say, can you please list them as a gotcha thinking that I, I actually don't read or that I never actually check what I'm talking about mm -hmm. or stuff like that, just as a gotcha stuff to prove me wrong, first of all, you're wrong in a, if you don't think I read everything out there I can. Well, like you obviously too, don't know me. A lot of that behavior on the internet is just people a lot of times spend their day now online. They're, the insane. online portion yeah. of their day, though, just marking their territory like a dog pissing on a fence yeah. post. Is they go, this issue, well, here's my take on it. Yeah. This yes. issue, here's my take on it. Yeah. And it's like, but nobody fucking cares. Why like are you're you not trying to help anybody. Why are you spending time of your day writing comments when you nothing can come well, you don't actually expect anything to come out of it, but just, yeah, getting pissed or just wanting to get angry or whatever. It, it baffles me that people will actually spend yeah. their time doing that. I have anyway. a good one here. Yeah. This, is a, this, is, this is a Tyler question. Yeah, there you go. Because this like is it. not a Julian question, yeah. most likely. Uh, an issue Tyler is very familiar with. <laughs> have you or others noticed their relationship to alcohol has changed with this nutrition? Oh, that'd be on you. I mean, I got my strong fit special. What about, um, so, so here's, what, here's what I found. I had for quite some time due to, to some injuries and all this stuff, I had a hard time training heavy with intensity. Mm -hmm. okay? um, this nutrition slowly started to bring that back for me. I, I'm able to train it heavy, intense, I'm able to find intensity, um, okay, yeah. and, then, and then feeling actually confident under heavy weight, which is a thing that, that is, uh, it's, it's awesome, but the moment you get under heavy weight and you don't feel good, Nothing feels worse in the yep, world than I that. I agree. And all you need to do is fucking you're stop. Gonna die. And that's a very yep. shitty way to have your training be going for months, right? Yep. Yes. Um, this, yeah. th like, like that slowly started getting better. Body composition started better. The truth of the matter is, you talk about relationship to alcohol. When I first started this, I think I wanted alcohol way more. Hmm. Like, like, like way more. I noticed... Not that I uh, was like a total degenerate or anything, but like, but You're there's just times, I'm a guy who likes to drink. No, what, enthusiast. What, what did I say? I'm not a connoisseur because I'm cheap. I'm just yeah. an enthusiast. But, uh, but, but I found that I, I, I tended to drink more. So which is actually why I had to make very specific adjustments into what I was drinking so I wasn't totally shooting myself in the foot. Yeah, because it's so, a sympathetic response. Exactly. Yeah. And what, what I ended up finding was as I have found that sympathetic response in my training, there's no pull for me to that outside of it. Nothing like it was before. I actually have drank maybe twice in the last 15 or 16 days, which is two or three times, which is actually well, less than usual. Yeah. And, and I'm not talking getting house, but just mm -hmm. having drinks. Yeah. Um, but before that, it might be like maybe three to four times over the course yeah. of a 10 day span. Um, and I'm, we're just talking having any drinks here. Yeah, but, yeah, not, not but, getting but, wasted. But, but, but in getting yeah. this, what I found is it, it was regulating me towards I needed more sympathetic. I needed to get it yep. somehow. Um, that's why the pull was towards, it was like, oh, I have a few drinks tonight. You know, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. Go, go out. Yep. Deal. And, and when I found it in training, it's just it's the, the, the urge stopped. And then I'm just kind of now just doing things uh, socially, so basically, as it should be. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you wanted a sympathetic response. Yeah. So you found it somewhere. And you know why I found it in that? It, why I was able to find it with booze is because I was not able to find it for so long. I had no reinforcement to the fact yeah. that I could get it in training. Yeah. Because I was so like, you I can't get it fucking anymore. get it in training yeah. anymore. I don't know what's Yeah, because going you want to die under the weight. Yeah. So people will find it in training. If they can't, they'll find it in booze 
or sugar or carb addiction. Yeah. That's where the sugar addiction is really, it's just you, you needing a sympathetic reaction, but not any sympathetic reaction. It's a fight reaction, yeah. not a flight reaction. We get plenty of flight reactions, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is we don't go into fight. And so you couldn't go into fight into training anymore because it was just too heavy, you were hurt. Mm -hmm. So you went to flight. So then you go to the next one. Yeah. And you'll see people choosing alcohol or sugar because it will rile them up enough that they go into, yeah, I can mm -hmm. conquer the world. And that's a fight reaction. And then you need more and more and more carbs or more and more sugar to create the same fight reaction because the problem is you're applying yourself incorrectly to the problem. Exactly. So the problem puts you into flight. And instead of fixing that, you're using food to put yourself back into fight. And now that's this, the wrong relationship. And I don't know, you've been more, uh, you've been communicating obviously more directly with everybody on the subjects, but, but that's just my experience. And honestly, I don't know that I have heard much on the subject from within the nutrition group of you. I know- From the mental stuff? Yeah, for, as far as alcohol goes. No, 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 much. no, 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 no. We, what we had, is, yes, yes, we did. Because we had a bunch of, uh, the ladies, if you remember, said they used to have two glasses of wine, that's and now they sweet. only have one. Yeah, yeah. it's too sweet. So I had, we had one that said wine tastes so sweet now, mm -hmm. which is normal. And we had another one that say, I used to have two glasses of one, I only have one. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. So because she's less in flight, right, she needs, she needs, she doesn't have as much alcohol to get herself back in fight. And as the relationship with the food becomes a healthy one, healthier one, she'll also learn mentally to put herself in fight and not in flight, which will also lessen the need for alcohol and sugar. Like mm -hmm. people have to understand, you can go from flight to fight mentally as well. You can just choose not to lose. Mm -hmm. That's what the flight is. A lot of situation is not the bear chasing you. It's a situation that comes at you and you have two choices. You can either run away mentally from it, saying, oh, it's all cool, I'm not mad, or yeah, yeah, I'll deal with it another day, or you can choose to confront the person, for example. Mm -hmm. Confronting does not mean grab a shotgun and start blasting everybody. It just means I do not like this. Like you confront the problem with the person and again, throw an insult, not a rock. So that means don't punch the person, just say, I do not like this. We need to solve this problem. That's a fight mode. Yeah. Fight mode doesn't mean fighting physically. It just means confronting a problem versus not confronting it, which is, oh, it's all good. We'll, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it another day. That's a flight mode. Yeah. So there's an entire approach to issues, even mentally, that needs to happen. And when you do that, you will notice that you need for alcohol, your need for carbs and sugars will go down mm -hmm. because you don't need to go from flight to fight anymore. Yeah. And now, That's a huge aspect and of then it. now, guys, you want to know a pre workout tip. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go in fasted. Yep. Have honey with you. I go with a little bit of espresso, a little bit of whiskey. A little bit's relative. Fish. Yeah. Uh, He's a big dude. Big dude. Uh, <laughs> it runs in my blood. But, uh, and but, your but, but have that and then start your training, like, like that right, and then start training. Um, between, the, between, the, right? between the caffeine yeah. and the whiskey, it's perfect. And the honey. And then the honey on demand. And I swear you'll go into training just ready to rip the hair off, yep. the head off a fucking bowl. It's and great. so do that, then have a reward system after, and you can't wait to go back to the gym. Yeah. That's the secret. So that'll be part of the group we're not talking about. Uh, <laughs> is how to also use all this as a reward system. Like all these links, they all link to each other because it's part of the learning process. Yeah. You need to learn to train in that aspect. You need to learn to train not just for today, but for the next session as well. And the next week, and the next month, and the next year. All this ties into, they all tie into each other. We have, let's see. All right, so how about this one? Because um, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a very human question. I like it. I like it. Right? This, is a, this is the type of question we get that's very habit-based. And these yep. are the things that, yep. um, that are kind of interesting to me. This one is, quinoa is a good source of mm. carbs, but also protein. Yep. When would you eat it? Now, uh, I'm going to answer that question yeah. first by saying, Christ, dude, do you have to eat quinoa? <laughs> like, do you, does anyone like quinoa? <laughs> like, on its own, you're choosing quinoa over other foods. That's the question, like, right? You're like, there's this thing that I heard is healthy, so I have to fucking eat it? Like, when you live in California, you do. I guess. I yes, guess. exactly. I guess. But if you shop at Whole Foods, they do. <laughs> they put quinoa in everything, I yeah. guess. But anyway, quinoa, if, if you're super into it, When's a person supposed to eat something that is it's still kind well, of okay. a balance? So of, like, like if it's 50-50, you know, or close right. to Right, so it. usually when you are at a 50-50 or over, you're shifting to, a, it's a sympathetic response. 
Okay. So it should be before a uh, longer workout or stuff like that. I had that question with lentils because mm -hmm. we had some people that are vegan that wanted to apply the protocol. I don't know how to do it with veganism. Yeah. If you cut, and I'm not talking about like pure vegan, not vegetarian, because they can have fish and mm -hmm. eggs. We're talking like full vegan with plant-based. Everything that I see is plant-based usually have carbs in it. Yeah. Pro probably because they would taste like shit otherwise. Yeah. But it's such a hard response for me. Like for example, lentils, right? By the way, take 60 seconds, go on Wikipedia, and you'll notice it's 63% carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Lentils is. So, and what, like 10% protein? So guess what? It's a carbohydrate. Yeah. That's what it is. Like, what do you want me to tell you? So, so have it before be you train. Or be super active all day. And so have it as a reward out. system. Yeah. Yeah. Start there. Have lentils and quinoa as a reward system. Yeah. Well, the other thing is this. If, I, all right, this is going to come out wrong. Okay. <laughs> if, here's the deal. If you <laughs> like, Too much whiskey. If you I know I was getting pissed. <laughs> trust me, not even close. <laughs> uh, is, is if you go, if you like ice cream, we're not saying don't have ice cream. There's a time for you to still just sit down, have ice cream, and watch. Have ice cream after training. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I mean, aside yes. from totally following the rules. I followed Julian. The rule you're a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You're a hundred percent. But 100%. I mean, I mean, like, like you're just you're just in a situation. Hey, you want some ice cream? Sure, do that. That's there's nothing wrong with. I'm a hundred percent too. You are. Yep, you are totally. But. Here's the deal. If you like quinoa, so if you're much, an eighty percent, yeah, exactly. fit quinoa. If you're going to do Somewhere. it, if you're going to do it outside the program, uh, just just fit it in and don't do it all that often, or have it in the situations that you described. Yeah, because if you're going to have it every day, then it has to be. It's got to line up. So do it before workouts. I one day we'll do a, a podcast one day on exactly how much calories and the whole macro stuff when it comes to carbs and protein, and we have to understand where it comes from. Like this bodybuilding stuff, parasympathetic all day. There's a number of issues with the concept. Mm -hmm. And we'll do a podcast on that. Because yeah. there's go very good stuff with bodybuilding that we should talk about. Spot reduction, why it works, where it comes from. It's not fat, it's water. Mm -hmm. And how come spot reduction works. The intra-carbs that they used to do in the 80s or 90s, whatever it was, that's very effective. We'll explain why. And then the whole like protein every three hours. Yeah. That one is wrong and we'll explain why. Yeah. So... Here's another good one. Yep. Um, how is the nervous system affected when someone has a cold and is lying in bed resting all day? Yes. And what so types of macronutrients should they consume? When you have a cold, that means you're fighting something, mm -hmm. right? There's a difference between you at 102. In bed, not being able to move, that means you're going in freeze, yeah. right? So that's on the parasympathetic side, you need to heal. If you have a cold, you're most likely in sympathetic because you're still going to work and everything. So that's going to require more carbs. So maybe some fruits all day. Huh. or stuff like that, not maybe all day, but like, you know, to keep the energy up because you're basically in a very low level fight all day, mm -hmm. trying to get rid of the flu. There's and that versus being in dead almost dying. And you do, do want to feed it. that because that is working for you at that point. Because right? you're like at work you and do you, you're it. doing stuff, right? Yeah. If you're that bad that you're on the couch, you should get fucking saturated fats yeah. and protein all day, stay there, heal, and then that will put you in the right phase. But the two are a bit different. You just, you know, like, so let's say, why well, are you sick? I'm like, what kind of sick? It's kind of vague. Like, yeah. are you in bed, like, seriously fucked up? Because that, that'll put you in freeze right yeah. away. That's basically you need to heal. Versus yeah. so, so in this case, if they're laying in bed all day, then saturated really fats, just fats, saturated fats all day, and then some, some protein, protein when you feel like exactly. you can handle it. Yeah. Okay. Like if you, so, you know, there's always moment where you have a little bit of, uh, you know, people come to see you, say if you're okay. If you socialize in that sense, I would start to have protein and stuff like that. We have to do an episode on that where the reward system can also be associated with saturated fats and protein. That's for another podcast. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple more really good ones here. We yep. have, uh, we've kind of addressed this, but I want to get into specifics. Can I follow the program if I'm vegan or vegetarian? If you're vegetarian, you can have fish and eggs. Yeah. We're good. Vegan. I'm, here's the thing. I, I guess you could. I think I'm interested in it just because it would be interesting to see a person who's willing by trial and error and to really give it the effort to find a way to make it work. No, I think it could make you know it work I mean? because it's plant-based protein. Yeah. But is that plant-based protein obviously powder that you're ingesting? Is it ha does it have carbohydrates and sugar on it? Even if they say no, mm -hmm. did you really test it? And then how much is, is affected from a digestion standpoint because... It's not whole, it's not fibrous, it's just fucking protein It's a powder. Dust, so, do, by the way, when you have a protein powder, are the bacteroids, because that's what it would go on plant, do they attack that? Because if I remember the stuff with the whey protein, they always say it's like pre-digested or what the fuck it means. Yeah, I don't know what any of that means. Yeah, it either. <laughs> but if it says pre-digested, that means like 
does it go right through and the bacteria does not need to, pro to break it down? Because then that would change the entire digestive process. I don't know how this works. Yeah. So first of all, do you know for sure that that company, that it's not right hair, but plant-based, first mm -hmm. of all? Do they put carbs and sugar in it? Not what they say. Do they actually do it or not? If we were to have a plant-based protein that is not that doesn't have carbohydrates or sugar in it, and that actually forces the bacteria, enfin, is decomposed by bacteroids, then yes, the protocol would, would work. But I don't know. Yeah. But if those conditions were met, yeah, 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 it would work. It, it, it would work the same. But I don't know if those powders get digested so fast. Maybe the gut flora doesn't get to touch it. Like for example, there's an entire problem with um, you know, the fake sweet, the sweeteners. Yes, right. that's actually a question in here. Someone asked about artificial sweeteners. Yes, so and how they affect the. We don't know, but we know it's n it affects negatively the gut flora, so that seems to be a big no-no. So technically, the problem is we're looking at it from a chemistry perspective. So it's like, but it's not sugar, therefore everything is fine. No, no, no. Since yeah, then, because you're not, your body's not uptaking sugar, so then you're not going to have that problem. Exactly, except that's not what's happening because it seems to have a negative impact mm -hmm. on the gut flora, and that creates a number of autoimmune issues, uh, <coughs> certain types of diseases, gut issues and behavioral problems. And I also so think it's, it's another set of issues. Because of the conditioning also, I would assume yes. that it would affect your nervous system in some way. At least at first. Yeah. Because, because anything that is sweet will create a sympathetic well, reaction. Well, That's why people I, like it so much. Actually, I think anything, <coughs> anything that is a placebo can be effective at first. But that's what a placebo but then it is. Just exa and then just over time, you're like, Oh yeah, this isn't, this isn't. Placebo is part concept. of the learning process. Placebo is uh, your nervous system reacting to something because it knows it's going to get a reaction. So by the way, if you do that for too long and you keep triggering that part of the nervous system and that part of the gut flora without actually feeding it, what happens then? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that might be a lot uglier than we think. Because yeah. we've seen some direct issues with the, the sweeteners now, with all, all that fake sugar stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, he might go as far as, if he fucks up with the gut flora, he'll go as far as fucking up with behavior and can create seri serious, serious diseases within the, the entire system. Because we know the enteric nervous system basically produces neurotransmitters, but also very important hormones and stuff like that. Yeah, it's shown that the, the gut flora uh, and, for example, eczema, Mm -hmm. that, that happens, like there's a number of things basically that are related to the nervous system and who knows if the artificial sweeteners don't fuck with that. If it does, it, we're going to create massive issues, but there's no sugar, so it's all good. Yeah. Ooh. Like yeah. we're playing with stuff we don't, uh, that's the problem is because we've been studying the gut flora for 20 years, we're playing with stuff we don't understand. So we're producing first and basically right now doing human testing mm -hmm. and see <laughs> how the, that's what we're doing. Yeah, so large now, scale, large scale, high testing. number. Oh, it's going to be an awesome study. Yeah. So people in 50 years or 100 years will look at us going, you crazy motherfuckers. Yeah. Like you actually did that. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're doing human studies on the food industry, on the food right now, where we introduce food uh, ins that your ancestors never had, a variety of food that we never had extremes of food all year long that we never had. Mm -hmm. And then we, st and then we fuck up with probiotics. Now we're starting to fuck with the gut flora and behavior modification without understanding truly any of it. Yeah. Yeah. Fun times. Well, and those types of things, especially just, just release com with no checks and balances, no information. By an industry it. that is famous for not caring. Yeah. Well, plus it's all money first, but that will completely and totally shape a society as yeah. a whole. Yeah. That's, but that's the U.S. for you. Yeah. Like they, like. So now we, we do so much back and forth. I can tell you that Europe to the US, every single time I get to the US, I have a reaction. Mm -hmm. Like we all know you're screwed in the US with the food, but I don't think we understand how bad it is. Yeah. My, I have such a strong reaction when I go to the US now. There's sugar and everything, salt and fat, we know that, but it's not even real sugar. It's not real fat anymore. The cows are sick, so the red meat isn't, mm -hmm. isn't of a certain quality. Like you could sh shape a culture and create some gnarly reactions out of a n high group of people by manipulating the food. I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose. It's no. not the Illuminati conspiracy. No, because they're solving other problems. Yeah, that's, but what they're doing the basically thing. is that shit that started that conference where like they, they had the giants of the food industry in the US saying we're gonna put uh, sugar and salt in everything because it tastes better. Mm -hmm. That's where, and then the, the 
what is called MDT or whatever, like you know that the stuff that they used to have in the Chinese. Um, oh, what was it? In seaweed, M Japanese MSG. seaweed. MSG. MSG. Yeah, the Japanese seaweed. So they're starting to fuck with stuff that we don't fully understand. But uh, and I believe you're totally right. We could shape a culture by doing that, mm -hmm. and I do believe that's what we're doing with the U.S. Yeah. Like one day, because look, at it's all extremes. It's fats and protein. Mm -hmm. Just less fat. So sorry, protein and carbs. Yeah. Carbs being the vessel of the protein because it's always with bread and everything. So you're digesting less and less protein. You have that protein that is of a lesser and lesser quality. The cows are sick. The chicken are raised in the conditions we've seen. The yeah. Everything is sick. So that means that carbs mean you don't digest the protein. The protein is such a low quality that it's, a, it's an attack to the nervous system anyway. So that means that you're raising a sympathetic reaction onto people all day. You take the fats out and you just feed them basically, in that case, carbs. Then you make people make sure they sit and don't do anything and you have an entire population in flight. Yeah. And then water retention, uh, uh, and then after that you start to see all the other issues, but eventually we'll be able to link all this together. It might take 100 years, maybe 200 mm -hmm. years. And look how crazy we are in 2019. Oh yeah. I mean, like my son, he used to have problems and we couldn't really pin it down as far as his, it's like, skin would break out yep just uh not really rash but bumps mm -hmm. you know just yep. just yeah, bumps yeah, yeah. all over and some days it would it would be isolated up here other days it would make its way all the way down under his stomach and stuff but there wasn't really a lot to be done about it, it yep. but but it's basically a it's a mild allergic reaction yes, that he was exactly. experiencing all the time and within three weeks of being in europe it's gone so it's either the food or the water I sometimes wonder if I don't. Water I, I, too. I don't think the air because in Vienna I mean, is any freer than the air in the no, middle I don't of nowhere. So. No, but look, I've been in San Diego, so air it was there. Yeah. But I remember when I was there, like, my, like I the felt water like is very interesting. And the I other thing that. is, I'm in a place now that has legitimately some of the best quality water in yes. the world. I, High mineral content. I'm starting to really wonder because I've been t when I was in San Diego. It was I tried. It was only whole food, so normally mm -hmm. more organic stuff and everything. But I was drinking like tap water. And I'm starting to wonder if, because you know, glycosphate, glycosphate uh, goes goes through that, and I'm starting to wonder about the water as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think well. in the U.S. you're screwed, man. Like I think the f the food and water, don't know water, but at least the food, is a far bigger um, problem than we realize. And I'm not thinking about what people eat. I'm talking about the quality of what they eat. Mm -hmm. and just what they what it's not even about their decision making. At that no, point. but and on top of it, they're being fed that bullshit story about you need whatever it is, like 300 grams of protein a day and 500 grams of carbs and everything where I'm like, but even if people say low carbs, they still say high protein. Yeah. So how about high fat? Yeah. I mean, low carbs and probably lower protein than you think. Low, well, like how much you weigh right now? Me, I'm about 315 or something. All right. Yeah. So you've been stabilized there for like at least Quite four weeks? Quite a while now, yeah. yeah. I haven't gone up or down more than five pounds in two months. Probably. Two months, right. Yeah. How much calories you get per day? I have no idea, but I would guess it's honestly probably like not over three thousand. So right now I'm having a lot of fat. I so really I bet doubt you that it's I'm over three thousand. I bet you I'm at thirty-five, four thousand. I yeah. bet you I'm at eighty, twenty. I'm eighty percent fat, ten percent protein, ten percent carbs. Yeah. I'm I'm a hundred grams of carbs a day, maybe. Yeah. Probably less with the training that I want. Sometimes training twice a day. Mm -hmm. I'm at and I'm probably hundred grams of protein, and then everything else is carbs. Uh, yeah. fat. Sorry. Yeah, and I train five days a week, heavy yep. for three of them. Uh, five, six days a week, sometimes twice. Two yep. for, for two of those days. Um, but you're probably, I'm going to guess that your output in your training is a little higher than mine is at the moment. I'm not trying to kill yep. anything here. Uh, but, I am. But, but, I'm, but, but I'm still doing it consistently. But I used to consume around six to seven to 8,000 yep. calories as I peak yep. up. And in that would be seven to 900 grams of carbs also. So do the math here. I was only 20 to 25 pounds heavier, yep. and I've completely maintained while cutting my food intake almost in half. Yeah. So, the, oh, so what it is And you cut your carbs by way. By I, 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 I'm yep. looking at it now, and I'm probably only consuming 100 grams of carbs a day, purely during training. Yeah, exactly. And right. that's yep. it. Yep. So there's no carb excess. Even like on my huge reward stuff, if the training doesn't go, you know, for different reasons, went a certain way, I bet you the max I get right now is 100, 115, and I don't have carbs outside of that. Yeah. I mean, some with in cashews and stuff like that, but yeah. it's, okay, let's say 150 grams of carbs a day, and that's on the huge ones. If I don't train, I don't do carbs. Mm -hmm. What kills What kills me is if I, w that, that's why I had to switch with, with alcohol. It's like I can't 
justify drinking beer. Yeah. Because it's just it's way too many carbs. Yeah. It's yeah, just it too is. many carbs. Yeah. And because I can drink a few of them. A lot. There's no point. Yeah. I, I don't want to. I, I would get 2,000 grams of carbohydrates <laughs> in the beer if I needed to. So straight whiskey is a yeah. lot easier. A lot easier on a guy. But or is that your excuse? Oh, yeah. I like excuse. it. I yeah. like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, but no, I actually I actually had beer. It was like a week ago, and it was yeah, it was one of those things. It was just like almost felt like it was a stimulant at that point because I was so sensitive to the totally, carbohydrates. Totally, I get super sensitive yeah. now. The, um, interesting stuff uh, we saw on the group basically, and I saw that on mentoring program as well. Most people have stopped drinking water during the day or at least reduced it tremendously. This is another question on here actually, and we'll have one more after this before we finish. If water can take you into the parasympathetic yeah. nervous system, should we consider the intent or timing of yeah. water intake? Actually, yeah, okay, but I don't want you to force it, right? I don't want you to go, ah, I can't have water during the day. I'm just yeah. saying that naturally, mm -hmm. I don't drink water during the day. If I try, it kind of gets stuck in my stomach. It's like my body doesn't want it. Six o'clock is usually when I, when I stop my day no matter what, turn off the iPad outside of uh, doing my pattern games, because mm -hmm. that's what I do for fun. That, <laughs> and then I count uh, two speaks. I <laughs> drop them on the floor, and then I count them. <laughs> Uh, that was a good joke, actually. That, that was a good joke. So I actually, I'm not kidding. <coughs> For fun, I do uh, pattern games on my iPad. Yeah. I'm that big of a, yeah. Oh, that's, I'm autistic, whatever. <laughs> um, so 6 o'clock starts, and basically, my day is done, and then I start my parasympathetic stuff. So it's going to be saturated fats, and then I start pounding water. Mm -hmm. I'm thirsty. I go, and then I start drinking. Before that, I just don't want to. Yeah. Like, if I were to drink water right now, we would get stuck here. I just would not like yeah. it. So I did not look at, oh, parasympathetic, don't drink water. I'm it just was that way. And, but so I didn't say anything about that, especially on the, on the programs, because mm -hmm. first of all, I wanted to see, and second of all, it would freak people out, yeah. right? So I didn't say anything. And I think we had 60% of them saying, yeah, I don't drink water anymore during mm -hmm. the day. Yeah, I have, it was the same thing as I have no desire to drink water during the day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I might have a cup this size of water throughout the day. Like in a bottle, but Most but that's about it. That. And then after dinner in the evening, I'll drink. I have these like one liter glass bottles in the fridge. I have yep. five of them, yeah. and I will drink probably three of those before bed. So the funny thing now, I wake up at least once a once a night to go drink water. Yeah, like I'm, but I want to. Mm -hmm. So I wake up going, hey, water. Yeah. So. Im it's not like, oh, I gotta get up and pee. So I mean, I pee anyway, but it's more like, hey, what? Like I want to. So I get up, drink my water, makes me happy, I go back to sleep, <laughs> pass I, out again. And I think it's, we, it's so weird. You can't overstate the fact, too, that all the work that you're doing to put in all this extra, if you're eating way more protein it's and way more carbs than you need, you and it's not digesting, it's so you. it doesn't matter. It's just, no. it's all extra work, it's extra but effort. But it's worse than that, it, it doesn't back. matter. It sends you back, because yeah. this is energy to digest, or at least to store. Once you store it, it starts attacking your system. So there's a number of actions that happen when you put so much food in that requires more energy, and if it's undigested, it starts attacking you, that requires more energy. Yeah. So the idea that even if, let's say, instead of 300 grams to get 150 in, Right? Instead of that, I'm going to have 200 and get 150 in. Technically, from a number of perspective, you have the same amount of protein in. But that's not true because that difference of 100 being put in creates such a deficit on energy that it takes to pro and all that stuff mm -hmm. that even though you have the same amount of protein in, you'll do so much better because all, all energy is not being spent on processing that extra food. Yeah, that's true. That's why dense in nutrients is so important because then it's less energy being used constantly, the blood can go everywhere else but in the stomach. Remember, if you eat all the time, that blood is going to the stomach all the yeah. time. I mean, it's not, it creates a number of issues. And I don't remember who, this is, you'll notice it's a pretty common theme when I attribute quotes yep. to people. I don't remember <laughs> who this was, but they said, uh, they, they said about drinking water, it's like so many people force themselves to drink a gallon of water. Because they've been told. A gallon of half water yep. they've been told to. And what they don't understand is, I don't know if you guys know this, but your body actually has a very good feedback mechanism to tell you when you should be drinking water. And are you fucking thirsty or are you not? And he has a flushing system. Yeah, because he tell you if you're thirsty, it's too late. I'm like, like you guys I are fucking think insane. So. Yeah, like, is that like, an insult to the human body? Why in by the, the world way, would that, that be the How case? How would you know better than the human body? <laughs> it is so. Instead, you should drink every thirty minutes. I'm like, are you guys fucking insane? Your body doesn't know when it needs water. That is an insane statement. By the way, the body also has a flushing mechanism. Do you know that when you have a heat stroke? Uh, you cannot drink water anymore because it just 
flushes it, it even more. Yeah, you have to drink calories. So orange juice or stuff like that, yeah. because otherwise it'll make it worse. Yeah. So that three gallons in a, is for, forcing a flushing mechanism from the body. Mm -hmm. So it actually will make you pee more, which will dehydrate you. And you get to a stage of dehydration where now you're at risk of getting, what's before a heat stroke? A heat something, whatever, I can't remember mm -hmm. the name of it. Right before the heat stroke, where you can actually get to there from severe dehydration for forcing yourself to drink when you shouldn't and therefore creating a flushing system. If you're not in a stage where you can process the water, parasympathetic, the system will flush it out. Remember, sympathetic also basically won't let you pee. So you're just going to hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That is on set of issues. Yeah. And then you start to flush it, but it's a sympathetic reaction, but that's not how you should process water. The body doesn't work like that. The fact that we need people to tell us when we're hungry, when we're thirsty, you need a fucking HRV monitor to tell you when you're stressed, when you slept well. Yeah. You, <laughs> I, you're being sold shit. Yeah. That's all. This is what, that's the downside of the Western world and the medical and fitness world we live in, especially in the medical profession as well, where they need to produce stuff. And experimental scientists have always an inflated ego. They always know the truth. But the truth is experiment, experimental, phys uh, not physicists, experimental scientists only know where to look because they are told by the theoretical s scientists. Yeah. And we yeah. don't have that in the medical world anymore. We only have people that produce. And people that produce are the experimental physicists going like, let me make a pill. And they have that inflated ego where they always know the truth. So they're going to look at five studies and go like, that's the way this works. And now they're pushing it. And of course, the industry is more than happy behind pharmaceutical industry, uh, food industry is more than happy to push it behind because they're getting more sales. And we're telling people stuff where to stop listening to themselves. I'll tell you when you're hungry, thirsty, I'll tell you when you're stressed. I'll tell you when you don't sleep well. Isn't that fucking insane yeah, when I say it like this? We'll just remove you from the equation. Isn't that <laughs> infantilizing everybody? Yeah. We'll t that's what drives me crazy. I'm like, well, guys, understand to, what they're doing. To, to literally just hand over responsibility to. Yeah, but, but, you know what but I mean? that's a dark corner of the human psyche yeah. where we are all tribe animals. That's normal. We're all social animals. That's where evolution wants us. We are used to being part of the tribe. So it's normal for us to look at a leader and say, OK, yeah. which is good because we need that to live in society. Otherwise, everybody would want to be an alpha. It's been tried before with different animals and you always end up in half of them dying. Mm -hmm. Right. So in society, especially some million people, you cannot have all better trying to be alphas. Otherwise, we'll be dead. So understand completely the need for that. But the problem is they're using it to, to play with shit they don't understand. So they're harming us in the process where they're like, let me take every ounce of responsibility you have toward yourself by basically telling you I'm a leader, I know better because I have a PhD. And the industry, not just that, the, the entire industry behind saying you should trust the guy in the lab coat, right? Even though uh, he's an extra and he's actually, <laughs> does not have a PhD, by the way. Um, and trust him and follow those stuff because we will tell you literally when you are hungry, thirsty, stressed, or sleeping well. Yeah. Know what I mean? And that's, that's the world we're in right now. That's why I get so pissed every time. So when people ask me to be that person to them, I'm like, then you're going to have to be part of the tribe. Yeah. Because then I get to explain to you everything else. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do it for people outside. So my tribe is a mentoring program, it's Strong Fit. And I have a responsibility toward them. Why? Because I get to check what you do and call you out on it on a regular basis. So that I'm willing to be. I'm willing to be the leader to my tribe because then I'll be in the back checking with all of them that they're doing OK. But someone of the street saying, just give me a recipe. I was like, dude, I will not be responsible to fuck up your nervous system. If you do it and do it wrong, you might do this or that. And I'm, I'm not going to be responsible for that. So what I want me is to educate people. Yeah. Always education man. always knowledge is knowledge is power. This last question. Yeah. If you do not eat dairy, uh -huh. do you replace cheese with avocado, olives, and nuts? Uh, the problem with that is we're going from saturated to unsaturated. If we were to, if this was during the first four to five weeks, however, saturated fats, would we you, can find would it you else. even care? Though, in the first four weeks, if you're no. like, if no dairy, no. all right, yeah, get your cheese yep. and nuts. Yep. Or get your nuts and olives, start there still. Yes. Uh, eventually. But once you're past yeah. the calibration point. Yeah, there's going to be an issue sooner or later. It's like saturated is not the same thing as unsaturated. For example, there was a study, I'll impress everybody with my knowledge <laughs> of studies, 
And I'll, I'll use one. Just one. So it's confirmation bias. Uh, that we're showing the effect of saturated fats and unsaturated fats on the liver while being associated with ethanol. Okay. So that means basically you drink. Mm -hmm. So booze with saturated fats, we're uh, doing less of a damage than booze and unsaturated fats. Because it seems that booze and saturated fats, basically we're creating a sympathetic reaction on both sides that was more damaging to the liver than the saturated fats that were kind of blocking the sympathetic reaction of the booze. Interesting. So there was an entire thing there that I started to look into. So just to say, saturated fats and unsaturated fats are not the same. Saturated fats is bacteroids, that's more toward the parasympathetic. Unsaturated fat, I think, is more toward the sympathetic side. So there is a difference. First four weeks, it won't matter, but sooner or later, you're going to have to find me saturated yeah. fats. So if you can't have cheese, can you have coconut-based stuff? I can't. Coconut oil just wrecks my stomach. I can't because it's fucking disgusting. No, I don't. I like it like in Thailand <laughs> or I had like three days of cramp, like really? coconut oil triggers cramp in me. Yeah. Milk, I'm okay, but I have to be very careful how much coconut oil I get. Like if I start to have like that coconut yogurt, which I, if I have too much of it, I start to cramp. I don't have diarrhea or anything like that. It just cramps. Like yeah. I have that, my four pack starts to cramp and I'm like, shit. <laughs> and suddenly it hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have a super strong reaction. And I mean, also we've had some interesting results on the dairy subject. So if this is a person who's choosing not to eat dairy, that's one thing. But if they're a little dairy sensitive, yeah. what we have we changed that as that? well. Yeah, so that'll be part of the podcast. But basically the idea is the prevotella is responsible for sugar. The problem with dairy is the lactose, which is a sugar. So if we activate the prevotella correctly, we've noticed that the dairy intolerance goes away. We had people that are full-blown dairy intolerant, like uh, if they have any dairy, it's baby wipes and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, unhappy trip. Uh, and we've been able to cut that out by giving them dairy after training sessions, like but very specific training sessions where we trigger the sympathetic aspect, get the prevotella going, and from there give them dairy, and they did not have re a reaction at all. And yeah. over, I would say, six weeks, may at least six weeks, maybe more, of the protocol, we had people that were daily intolerant that are not anymore. Mm -hmm. But it took a while to get everything going. That was part of the podcast. And it also takes some, some alignment with your training, too, to speed that up. That's important, okay, too. Because all way, of those people that got those results, this was fully aligned with, with the training. training. That, that is something we'll have to talk about, is uh, most of the people on the mentoring program go into sympathetic. Uh, most of the people on the auto-regulation group, the group from outside, also go sympathetic when they train. We had issues with some people that don't train at all, mm -hmm. that they never push to sympathetic. And that, I don't think the protocol will work very well because of the simple reason is you cannot skip the sympathetic part. But it has nothing to do with the protocol on nutrition. That has to do with life. The life is balance. It's an arch between the past and the sympathetic. You cannot skip that part. Do you think a person who can't find that in training is going to always feel that pull for carbohydrates just to get them there? Because, yeah, because they're in flight all the time. Yeah. The only reason they're not training like that is because they don't want to. It's because they can't go there. Mm -hmm. They can't go into a fight mode. You want to bet there's an entire conversation behind that to have on where they are in life and their capacity to deal with situation and stuff like that, and you'll find that they're in flight most of the time. You'll see water retention in certain specific places. You'll see the same injuries coming up. That's a flight reaction. And so they're going to use carbs in order to put themselves into fight that addicted to carbs that we talked about. Yeah. That's just a need for fight. But that's because mentally you're going into flight. You have to deal with shit in your own life and learn to go toward fight to get rid of that carb, that continuous carb uh, addiction or booze or getting slapped in the face and or whatever works and, and for well you. And that's one of many reasons why we train anyways. Because I mean, we all there, have there's issues. A, there's a, well, there, but there's a million reasons to train, but one of them is that you do need to experience what that is like as a human, what, it feels, like, what it feels like to be on in a fight. On a regular fight. basis. Yeah, so that, so that you're not taking that out on situations where it's not appropriate. On your too. dog. Yeah, on your dog or on your... Or you have kids because you can't beat up your on, dog. Or on yourself because yeah. you're shoving your face with fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But understand that bed, you, you know I mean? shoving up the carbs is the same thing as you taking your anger on the dog. Yeah. It's basically, so one is a, you're just trying to get into a fight and you're fighting something. So maybe you have kids so you can't beat up the dog. Yeah. But it's the same basically reaction, right? It's still you not dealing, dealing with the stuff. And it's a, it's a fundamental part of everything we do is that sympathetic side has to be experience has to be, and you have to go there often. That's why I think Jiu Jitsu is the greatest thing you can do because you're gonna go sympathetic. And at first you're gonna get your ass kicked, you're gonna go in flight, and then because the guy is trying to kill you, you're gonna learn to go toward the fight mode. And I think that's why Jiu Jitsu was so great uh, for me, is force me to go away from flight into, dude, the, dry, the dude is trying to kill you, do something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
yeah. then learn to flow within that, mm -hmm. which was so important. So now it wasn't enough to be in fight. I had to learn to go from fight to flow, even though I had a sympathetic reaction. I think to me that's the greatness of Jiu-Jitsu is that, that you can't find in karate because you're not going to fight someone. Because yeah. if they punch you in the face, you <laughs> so it's not going to happen often. Whereas in Jiu-Jitsu, you can spar an hour every day hard and not, be, not get brain damage from it. Yeah. That's what, to me, the greatness of Jiu-Jitsu is, is that. is to learn to go into fight and then control the fight, to go into flow. And, and I think this is everything. Cool. Awesome. Well, I hope that cleared up some of the questions we have. If you have more questions, send yeah. them our way. This is a good forum for us to... Yeah, we'll I, do think, I think it's, yeah. much, it's actually much easier to... If you have a question, um, we'd like to address it here. Uh, we're usually pretty pretty good about responding to, to questions online, but Somewhat. but it's also the worst way to communicate. So yeah, I mean, you want me to answer on stuff in two lanes through comments, and it's so hard, and it can be mis misinterpreted, misinterpreted in sixty different ways, yeah. and then other people attack it because they misunderstand because yeah, they don't understand to, the question and to, anyway. And, and to be thorough via text message, it's or very hard. But no, because one it's guy starts and then got four guys jumping in saying, "Well, but you said that protein." I'm like, "Yeah, but yeah. in the context of," and I can't explain that because yeah. I don't want to spend pages and write pages because then people are like, "Well, will you do?" my group then. Yes. and then can you give me a recipe and then we are back in the same problem yeah so yeah. but send us questions we we're happy to help um we'll, we'll definitely i think this is a the q a on the nutrition thing, yep. stuff especially on the some of the new stuff we have i think any new subject that we roll out is going to be something that we're going what to what's the time on this um that time is weird because it goes off of uh like beats per minute or like oh. like time signatures i think it's been like an hour and 20 minutes oh shit well, there we go yeah. all right so we'll do this on a regular on a recurrent yeah. basis yeah. yeah it'll be great all right well thanks a lot guys thank you guys Peace. all right we're here uh at strong fit hq i'm talking with andy from where again i'm from munich germany okay and andy you've been here now for five, di five days Is this yeah five days? Four, it's my fourth day today okay um came here for the assessment seminar Last okay. weekend, what was the what were you like trying to get out of the assessment seminar? D the assessment just more like to understand. Doing assessments, you just can get better by doing assessments. And I think that's like the best. <laughs> you just have to go and go and go and go. Yes, and go. just yeah. just do it, and just to learn more about it. Watch Rich doing assessments and just learning, getting deeper into that rabbit hole mm -hmm. um, will help me. Uh, getting better at my own assessments. Yeah, yeah. So that was the main reason um, I came here. Now you had a bit of an interesting experience here this time from a like a like like a feeling while being assessed yes. sensation that you maybe hadn't had before. Mm. What what were you guys trying to do as far as your assessment goes this week? So uh, we we're talking about a little bit about the emotional mapping or the emotional side behind an assessment and then the coach told me, all right, let's go downstairs. Let's test something. So he, he wanted me to find my hemis. We're well, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's a difference between, you know, when you're in high school and you go walk up to a girl and you're like, do you like me or do you like me? That was the difference. Wait, that is not how this thing went. Okay. So you're fine. I'm breaking everything. You're fine for now. <laughs> all right. So that's not how you went. First of all, you showed up with all your research about Chinese acupuncture and the body and stuff like that, which is pretty awesome, right? So explain that one first. Okay, um, when it comes to the emotional mapping, I was looking at emotions and how we can trigger emotions with movement. And the way I did it, I was looking at Chinese medicine because they link it to uh, organs and muscles. And then I was looking at acupuncture they trigger muscles and organs as well, and I was trying to get like the triangle and emotions, connection. right? Yeah. Yes, and emotions to get the triangle connection. So you show up with that. Yes. Right. Trying to get answers out of that one. From there, we start to establish certain muscles with certain emotions. Correct. Right. And then the strong fist system based on that, which I explained for twenty minutes. Right. Exactly. And then we tested it. Right. I need to give background <laughs> because he's missing the good part. Now, I want to, I've, I've heard the story as far as the test goes, but you weren't given like a thousand different ways to find your hamstrings. No. You were given one way. One. Yeah, usually, like I thought when I feel my hammies, like we went down and I had to 
to feel them. And I was like, all right, I got my hammies. And coach looked at me like, no, you don't feel your hammies. It's like, yes, I feel them. When I move, I feel them. No, probably. I'll take care of that later. It'll be all right for now. <laughs> It's a, it's a converter issue. I broke it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so, so you were given one tool to find your hamstrings. You thought you found them initially. You just kind of got warm, I suppose. Yeah, I just, uh, th that's, uh, that's why the, the sensation came. It, it's a difference between feeling and feeling. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I feel my hammies. And coach was like, no, you don't. Find your hammies. It's like, I got them. And she's like, no, you don't. Find your hammies. Find your fucking hammies. So I was playing around, getting really frust frustrated. I couldn't find it, didn't know what, what to do. And he told me, all right, you were a soccer player, right? How, how ma in how many ways did you kick a soccer ball? I don't know, a lot. Yeah. All right, do that with your hammies. So it took me like 50 minutes playing yeah. around. Of just hamstrings. Just hamstrings, just moving forward with my knees, with my hip, uh, pressure on the big toe, on the little toe. Same exercise? Same exercise. Yeah, just on one exercise. Yeah. And then uh, I was finally starting getting somewhere. And Rich was doing, uh, like, watching me. And then he did a workout next to it. And he always said, oh, that looks better. Nope, you didn't get it. And I <laughs> get really <laughs> mad at myself. I'm getting super frustrated. And then finally I found them after, like, an hour. Mm -hmm. um, the feeling when you, when you really got it, I was like, I got super angry and I was just looking at a wall like with an empty face and not doing anything. Yeah, just just off. off. Yeah. But the good thing was I found them, but I didn't feel anything else anymore. Yeah. There was no like reinforcement of that at all. You just you found them and then I suppose had you left at that point in time it would have just been like, well, there's my there's my hamstrings. Yeah, and yeah, no, I got whatever. them. Yeah. So it takes me 45 minutes tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm back here, hello. Yeah, so basically went into full freeze mode. Kay. He's literally here looking at the fridge going, German. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like he went full German. <laughs> and so he's in freeze mode, basically not feeling anything anymore. The funny thing about this, I need to put the context, is there was an entire testing being done. There were two faces, which I explained to him for 20 minutes, which he was nodding about, which was, we're going to do skill to find your hammies. Once we have that, you're going to have a reward system toward the parasympathetic side. And in that case, it will be there for saturated fats. Go ahead, Andy. All right. So I'm sitting there looking at the fridge and coach goes like, all right, here's some cream, chug it. Chug cream, <laughs> chug it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I was drinking the cream and I'm sitting there for another five minutes and I feel really happy. And I turn around to coach and go like, coach, I don't know what you were testing, but you got me happy. <laughs> which, 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 if you've seen the movie Zoolander, kind of is like that. I was scene. about to say, you know yeah. what that scene when he says, "So, what? Why man models?" He's like, but, got, but we just. I, I just that. fucking explained to you for ten minutes. I was like, so he looks at me literally, going like, "I don't know what I was, but I feel really happy." And he's all like smiling and everything. I'm like, I explained to you for twenty minutes. You were nodding. I actually, I. And then he goes and looks at me and goes, "Oh, I get it." And now you want it. I also think that's important, though, not to downplay the the actual power of of finding something in that way where you are forced to just do it. You know what I mean? There wasn't there wasn't a bunch of hand holding in which they basically did it for you. No, there was no hand holding, and the, it was the first time I really felt the intensity. If I would have done it at home, I would be like, all right, I feel my hemis. All right, now get some cream. All right, I put a little bit of cream in my coffee, mm -hmm. and that's it. And now I was like really. 50 minutes just working on my hammies until I really fed them and then chugging uh, like a whole cream that was like, all right, th that's the intensity. Now I feel any, now I feel something. Yeah. Um, the best part or the best part was the next, the uh, next day we, uh, we did the assessment workshop and I had to assess a guy and he had the same trouble not finding his hammies. So I was like, ah, I experienced it a couple of days ago. Oh, do I got a trick for you? I'm just going to yell at you for 45 minutes <laughs> while you try <laughs> to work on your hamstrings. <laughs> and then I'm going to give you some cream when you're done, right? Yeah. <laughs> do not steal my tricks. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was giving him some exercises to find his hammies. And same conversation. Do you have, feel your hammies? And he's like, yeah. 
So our assessment is kind of over, and Rich walks up to me and he goes, no, he didn't feel his hemis. How did, how did you look a couple of days ago? And it's like, ah, all right, all right. <laughs> Same stuff happens. We'd, uh, I pushed him a little bit harder. I cranked up the intensity. I pushed him harder and harder and harder. And then uh, there was this moment he really turned white. Mm -hmm. And he goes like, oh, shit, I found my hemis. Oh, fuck. And he was just white and staring at, staring at me. Yeah, I remember. I remember that look. <laughs> I, <laughs> I that what that look feels like. Yeah. <laughs> that was my look a couple of days ago. So yeah, that was. So that turn, that actually turns into a. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait! Did you give him heavy cream? Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Then what happened? <laughs> actually, uh, we went, gave him a couple of euros. Okay, go to the supermarket, get some heavy cream. And no, he didn't get heavy cream. He went with. He spooned coconut oil. But that's no, that's still saturated. Yeah. Okay. He spooned coconut oil. Um, ten minutes later, he was like, "Ooh, thanks, dude. I feel so good, but that was crazy. Yeah, you Thank go. you." <laughs> so I think it's important, though, not to downplay the. I, I, I mean, Ju Julian's busting balls a little bit with the whole like, but we just went over what we were testing thing. But the funny thing is, is like that is seems to be that that's kind of pretty common when you find something like that after working a skill like that for a long time. And then it becomes a pretty intense experience, and then you're just. No, but that was a learning done. experience for me because, uh, and it should be for everybody in the sense of it's about intensity. Mm -hmm. When I say, f I think, but they, uh, it's on me too. When I say find your hammies, the problem is I didn't explain that. Like I, Andy, I had no clue. He's like, yeah, I did. I feel them, and I'm like, f did you cramp? No, but then you didn't find them. Now, did you? But that's because I don't explain. To me, it's normal. It's like finding your hammies. That means everything cramps, and two hours later, your ass is still cramping. Yeah. But to most people, it's like, I can feel it. I'm like, so that's on me from not explaining the context and explaining clearly what I mean by find your fucking hammies. Yeah. Now he knows. So that means yeah. that's on me for not explaining that. Yeah. Like that's it. It's not calling people out. It's explaining what intensity is. Yeah. And I think I've slacked way too much on yeah. that, where it's like, that's not good enough. Yeah. That's what I've been doing a lot with the mentoring program. It's like, that's not good enough. I want better. I don't want you to find your hammies like, yeah, yeah, this, no. Thank I you. want you to fucking find your hammies. Like, from the bottom all the way to your ass and your mind explodes, you find your hammies. But mm -hmm. short of that, it's not that. So I think that's the problem that I saw also in the mentoring program is that is we don't explain intensity and what it is enough. Yeah. Like, I want more. And it's not better. Like, Let me rephrase. Mm -hmm. I want better. It's not like explaining um, intensity. You have to feel it. Yes. Same with the theory. I did understand the theory. I was, I, I knew what we, what we were testing, but I was so surprised after I felt yeah. like the theory, what it actually, what it feels like. And after you, and the thing is too, is after you had actually felt that, the next assessment you rolled into with the same problem, like, how much more effective are you at oh. teaching that the set that second time than you would have been if you're just walking up to a person doing what you thought it, you had to do? It was so much easier. Just the learning curve from having that experience mm -hmm. and doing that assessment was like, I, I don't know how many steps I took. Yeah, yeah. So feel it's everything. <laughs> so so how are you going to go home and explain it now? Man, when I go home... <laughs> When I go home and my coach is gonna, we have a meeting tomorrow where all my coaches are sitting and they're gonna ask me, what did you learn over the, over the couple of days you were at Strongfit? And that's such a hard question to answer because I feel like when I go home, I'm back in the 1920s and I have to explain the fucking internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, you know, you have a laptop. What is a laptop? You, uh, electricity, what is electricity? I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Because if I come in like, hey, I found my hammies, they're like, yeah. Like, like I said uh, in the beginning, they're right there. Th yeah, they're here. Yeah. So that's going to be the biggest challenge just to, uh, to take it you know, step by step by step. I need a couple of days to process everything and the whole experience and then the whole weekend. And then going back, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I will find a way. Yeah. With, likely with the assessments. I go home and start educating the, my coaches. But it's going to be... They will feel it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they, the, they have to feel it. That's the thing too. Don't, don't teach it to someone. Just make them feel it. Yeah. 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 And that's really a, a difference between feeling and feeling. It's like in high school when you walk up to a, to a girl like, do you like me or do you like me? <laughs> right now, go and feel your hammies. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Well, I think that's got us all wrapped up here. Sounds like a pretty awesome... Uh, 
pretty wild experience. It's Great <laughs> experience. And uh, and Julian seems to be a little warmed up to you now, as opposed to probably when he was barking at you for your hamstring. So, <laughs> so, so, so we all got out the other side. So awesome, Andy. Thanks a bunch for coming on. Thanks for having and me. And we'll see you soon. See you soon.